Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Eorkin Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Monday, August 3rd, 2022, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, verses 16 through 34. In those days, while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked within him, as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he argued in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and in the marketplace every day with those who chanced to be there. Some also of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers met him, and some said, What would this babbler say? Others said, He seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities, because he preached Jesus and the resurrection. And they took hold of him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this teaching is that you present, for you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there spent their time in nothing except telling or hearing of something new. So Paul, standing in the middle of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious, for as I was passing along and observed the objects for your worship, I also found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, that God, who made this world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all men life and breath and everything. And he made from one every nation from one every nation of men to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their habitation, that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel after him and find him. Yet he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your poets have said, for we indeed are his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone or representation by the art or imagination of men. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in his righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all men by raising him from the dead. Now when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, but others said, We will hear you again about this. So Paul went out from among them, but some men joined him and believed. Among them, Dionysius the Areopagate, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 24 through 30. The Lord said to the Jews who came to him, Woe to you that are rich, for you have received your reward. Woe to you that are full now, for you shall hunger. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, so that their fathers, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. But I say to you that here, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To him who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. From him who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and to him who takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. So in today's gospel reading, we have the opposite of the Beatitudes. We do not find these in the gospel of Matthew, but they are very, very striking here in the gospel of St. Luke. You remember earlier... We talked about the Beatitudes in Luke being of physical attributes. Woe to you that are rich, it says here, but blessed are you poor. It said earlier, not poor in spirit, but poor. Woe to you that are full now, he says. But then earlier he said, blessed are you who hunger. 
and then woe to you who laugh. And on the other hand, earlier he said, blessed are you who mourn and weep. And so there are these opposites. Those that are suffering now will find joy in the life in God in eternity. And those who enjoy luxury now will suffer because they have everything they need on earth. And that is indeed the distinction that St. Luke is making in this particular set of readings. Because in the world, you have a choice. You can either take the things that are good of the world, the created things, or you can focus your attention on the divine things that will bring about joy and fulfillment, not now, but in a delayed time in eternity. And what our Lord is saying here is that we must dispense with the things of the material world, with the clamor and with the idolization of people and with the material possessions. All of those things are traps. They keep us locked into this world and they do not give us the opportunity to seek the kingdom of God in all of its righteousness. And so he's literally in this passage telling people to dispense with the material things of this, of this world, to get rid of the things that hold us down, that keep us from moving. But more so, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who abuse you. So even how we are treated by the people around us, and again, this urgency too, to him who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other as well. We've heard that one before. That's also in the Gospel of Matthew. From him who takes away your coat, do not withhold your shirt. Similar things in the Gospel of Matthew. And everyone who begs, give, and do not ask anything in return. And also if someone even takes from you, do the same. Do not ask for it in return. This urgency that the material things in this world like an anchor to a boat and unless you pull the anchor or drop the anchor and let it go get rid of it there's no way that you will move towards the kingdom of heaven these are hard sayings for us especially in this day and age when it, we live in a time of relative ease and comfort we begin to fool ourselves into thinking that the material things are not going to hold us back, but instead are going to somehow be a means to an end. And that is not what is being said here. So we must be careful in understanding how we live, and we must be careful in understanding how we accept the praise of those around us, especially those who do not share a common faith with us. And I'm not trying to say you hate those people. No, in fact, in this particular passage, it says you love them without any kind of judgment or criteria. But that is exactly how we are supposed to live. This is not a life of accommodation. It is a life of following after Christ and allowing that reality to dictate the terms of how we deal with others. We are to love on our own terms, not on how the world perceives us or how the world would want us to live. This is indeed the challenge, but with Christ and with the help of one another, all things are possible. May God bless and keep you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Thank you very much for joining me today. I pray you have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.